guys we're back we're back finally for episode two of the trey fan podcast uh this is the episode called mamba forever uh remembering the life of kobe bryant in just a few short moments we'll talk about it i'm gonna be introducing my first guest who is a good friend of mine um he's a young boy how old you know 22 22 23 next month bro 23 yeah we have the same old yeah <laughs> turning 23 and he's making his way in the barber scene 100 my brother from fate culture 100 100 freeze what's going on boy? what's going on bro there you go got yeah the there. so Sick um, podcast bro you got going yeah big up bro big up you know this is funny because this is he's like the only guest i can actually have that's like here it's jokes because of covid and all that shit yeah <laughs> so that's the thing like if there was ever a time to start these things it was now um obviously like you got to take precautions and stuff so most of these stuff will be over zoom calls so i'm happy you could sure. be the first Definitely and only bro. guest <laughs> maybe besides rashida who's also here she can give a shout out quickly just say what up just she's by the camera she's like just making sure the video footage and I'm stuff is wicked order. um Big up to her. yeah so i i was thinking to start this by uh giving like you know intro to who you are so you can go into detail about like you know um, how you got into, you know, being a barber and stuff when this stuff started. So, floor is yours, brother. So, like, I don't know, man. Just starting up as a, as a new beginning barber is just, like, getting into the scene, not knowing many guys. Actually, no one, actually. Um, came from construction, did not know much about scissors yeah. or anything at all, honestly. Going into hair school, like, like literally no skill at all like didn't yeah. even know how to hold scissors properly bro holy crap that's crazy and, eh? bro and and now i look at myself like a year and a half later professionally doing it like certified barber yeah hairstylist whatnot um like i don't know it's crazy man like it's, it's fucking crazy <laughs> so do you think like was there like ever another point where you were like considering um something else to do or was barbering like as soon as you knew it like you're like that this is the one that i'm gonna like make a career out of you know nah so honestly bro i honestly thought my life was gonna stick in construction or something with woodwork bro. yeah honestly because my whole family that's my background you know what I yeah mean? yeah so uh yeah way different lifestyle in the hair industry like the whole family yeah. like was shook you know what i mean yeah you like, so did it consider it like a like a big risk or anything or were they like on board with you taking like a chance to do something different i mean Honestly, my mom and dad were like, you know, is this going to work? Are you going to bring the clientele to you? Because that's what it is. You got to bring people to you. You know what I mean? You got to market yourself. It's word of mouth. You know, you got to go to people. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. But um, yeah, I I pulled it off. You know what I mean? By watching a lot of YouTube videos. Shout out like 360 GZ. My boy fucking like JC the Barber Hood, hood, um, Hood Boys Barber Shop. Yeah. Like those guys are, those guys are crazy, bro. And those guys brought me to where I am today. That's wicked, man. That's wicked. Uh, so did you get into uh, barbering like during high school and stuff or was it like as soon as like you finished uh, schooling? Uh, so high school, no, nah, I didn't, I didn't do no hairstyling. No, I wasn't even into my own hair to be honest. I had a, <laughs> I had a fucking fro, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Real shit, yo. You got that Ecuadorian blood. Yeah. Right? Curls come up. You that know, curls, so bro. Too, bro like. Real shit, bro. <laughs> but yeah, man. No, I, um, after high school, straight into uh, woodwork. Um, yeah. working with construction my uncles making just straight cash and then obviously went into hair school yeah shout out uh jessica and uh martin there uh, I- iconic academy that's, nice nice that's, that, that's huge bro that's and you um, for me. you also just got your diploma finally um what was it uh, a couple months ago yeah yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty sick, bro. I I didn't think I was gonna make it, honestly, bro. Yeah, <laughs> the modules, everything was tough, bro. But I I pulled through, man. No, that was good, bro. That's the like I feel like too is like when you really want something, you're gonna do anything to make make yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You, know you just and get like, it. Like I, you always get you got those like find out those things when you're like a kid and stuff. You always hear like you know if you really want something, you know, go into it. Like you know, follow your passion and stuff. For sure. But when you're a kid and stuff, you're like, oh, I'm not fucking like you know, yeah, like you know. you're just kind of like whatever y'all talking stupid this. You know yeah, yeah. Like, but I think when you actually find something that you're <clears throat> driven about, that you're you really want to make sure actually follows through. Yeah, 
you put your all into it and it's like a, such a power that you don't even know you have you no. know what I'm saying you just like, things just match up you know and then it just clicks and then you just see what's up because you know? I'll tell you bro like I remember when I had to study when I was studying business management um, at Humber the first year right after like I finished high school I hated it um, yeah. just because like it felt like it was such a, a basic knowledge that they mm. were teaching you yeah that it wasn't anything new I was learning. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I really went past that stage. And so that's like cool. most guys, bro. They yeah. just jump into secondary schooling and they don't like what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they Think about how much up. money is wasted. Bro, you know what honestly, I'm bro. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm happy that like, even though like now you probably like, or like when you first started, like, bro, like this is really risky to yeah. do. But you can look at it now in the long run. Like, bro, like look how much fate culture is making a movement. In Definitely, just little bro. time. Like, look, you're 22 turning 23, right? And you have such a, a hot, like a, a high following um like for, for before you i was going to my boy uh spins spins cuts shout him out shout out to that guy bro yeah blazeman you know you guys check him out <laughs> blazeman bro <laughs> yeah i was getting my cut with him for four years you know what i'm saying so when i uh when um you know you started dating my sister shout out to rashina <laughs> or supposed to jewelry you know what i'm saying um, shout out, Mary <laughs> you know i was like kind of iffy to get like another cut because you know like that loyalty to your barber no, is like a whole different bro. you know that, like that shit can't change bro that's but, like you know, that's I was marriage pushed, yeah you know what i'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> so like you're like kind of iffy about it but yeah, um yeah. you know happy i did you know like we both kind of you kind of learned to get you know get used to my hair and stuff you know you, bro. Got was... cut right before this you know what i'm saying you <laughs> had to like first up for this didn't be stuff um, so you and spins always gonna be holding down man you guys been cutting me for a while and um you know especially it, especially during freaking covid you know during the like, lockdown bro it's people tough needs cut, <laughs> i don't even gotta cut myself those, bro it's crazy yeah. <laughs> so yeah man i appreciate it like now yeah, that's it like i look at it like what i still get a cut like what twice like, like at least once every two weeks yeah. yeah so like it's still something bro compared to these other men who i got you bro. We're still <laughs> waiting you know what i'm saying so thanks for that bro that shit's curling up bro <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, I was going to get into actually what the show is going to be about because I know a lot of people asked uh, on the first episode. So the first episode, we didn't really get to tie into like, um, you know, what the detailing was going to be on this show. Uh, and unless you watch the trailer, guys. Um, so the, the show is honestly going to be about anything and everything, wherever the conversation takes us. Um, yeah. We're obviously, we'll be focusing on sports, uh, pop culture, what's going on, media and entertainment, uh, yeah. the music scene, movies, like... Whatever is happening in the world, we're gonna talk about it. Um, Definitely. I just feel like I don't want to limit it, and I I notice as well like on thirty five minute episodes, it is kind of condensed in what right. you want to talk what about. You talk about. So wherever these things take us, bro, it'll take us. You just know shoot what I'm it on like, the table, brother. Yeah, I'll probably do like a timestamp so everyone can have an idea. I think that'll probably be like better, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, where they can pick where they want to listen to. And, for sure. You know, for sure. Oh yeah. Once again, too, like you know, shout out to everybody for for tapping know, in, for tapping in, and you know, like the first episode did so well and the feedback was amazing so thank you to everybody you know like dude we got like 70 people watching on youtube yeah in, bro like, big up yourself days, bro that's so, all you man that's oh, thanks. it's all the help man it's, it's, you know it's crazy bro it's um especially it, it, during this hard time bro lockdown like you're like how do you even keep yourself like you know sane like but you're still keeping up with you know your podcast yeah. and you know what you got going on so that's good for you bro, yeah, bro like, thank honestly. you i um so i was watching uh the flagrancy it's a it's a podcast channel uh hosted by uh andrew schultz and akash thing okay. and uh andrew schultz said it best he said use this time to just grind like they're not putting you in jail or anything they're just putting you in a creative jail right and that time use it to build like they're they're, they're not like taking away your social media they're not taking away like your family your, your nothing, family bro. anything you're just at home use that time to create yeah. so that was like like a hidden mo- moment for me where I'm like yo I gotta freaking take this time to like do shit you know what I'm saying like there's still like what else are you gonna do in six months bro <laughs> dude that's like could you imagine if we didn't like do nothing? what we're doing what, what, like what would you really be doing right now um like, obviously Cod will still be there but, yeah you know video we're gonna do that as like, <laughs> like <laughs> kind of like a side thing right now yeah. um, but you, I think like it, it really tests you man like this stuff and you know no it does bro and honestly like trying to just trying to build like relationships either if it's between you and your girl or you know between you and your relationship between work or anything anything man this this lockdown it's it's crazy it's crazy bro it i think it it it's one of those where it's like you didn't think the impact was going to be such 
Like nah. what it became, you know what I'm saying? You didn't think it would go this long, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't honestly think it would go this long. Like next month is my birthday. It's like yours too and we're what, still and under about, this shit. Think about what, what I mean? we did last year. So actually last year, uh, that's when COVID was like first yeah. starting. Like March. So our party was like the last yeah. thing everybody was together. And we yeah. had like, I think it was like 55 to like 60 people in that house plus in DJ the bro in the basement like we yeah. had a party bro <laughs> yeah shout out to kids for us bro you was DJing yeah, that bro. party man that, uh, yeah so it's crazy to think like how much times have changed like now you only can have 10 people in one or like 5 people in a house now I have no idea bro yeah it's 5 people in a house now or some shit <laughs> Just freaking ridiculous. So, <laughs> I don't even know where the hell we're doing for our birthday this year. Bro, but I don't even know, it's man. It's going to be something super chill. Suck um, down some rum. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Remy drinker now, bro. I, I fucking discovered that. <laughs> Keith, Keith that was the one who put me on, you know. Shout out to Eyes, eyes Laid Low, bro. <laughs> you put me on uh, <laughs> St. Remy, bro. Uh, but, uh, jokes. Yeah, man. Wherever the, the, this year even started off bad, though, to be honest. Last year even started off bad. Mm-hmm. Last year. Um, so obviously, if you guys haven't known, um, on uh, when this episode comes out, it makes a year since the passing of Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Um, so we thought it would be dope to, uh, you know, uh, make this episode be about them, you know, in uh, memory of them. For sure. So I just want to take a moment to, you know, think to those who passed. Um, Alyssa Antebelli, John Antebelli, Ken Antebelli, Sarah Chester, Payne Chester, Christina Mouser. And the Bryants, Kobe Bryant and Gigi Bryant. Crazy, Rest man. in peace to them. Rest in peace to them, man. Um, For real. It, it's crazy to think. Like, I remember when we found out the news, actually, uh, me and you were together. Yeah, bro. And yeah, um, it's a it, year today. Like, it, it still seems surreal to think, like, now a year has passed. A year, yeah. Sorry. Since that happened. Um, like, the world was shocked, bro. Like, immediate froze. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's like, I don't recall, like, you know, um, a celebrity having such an impact where the whole world felt it you know, you know what like, I mean? not moment, even to people that were engaged in the sport like i don't even watch ball and but when i heard it you know yeah. what i mean like shit just hit the fan like yeah. come on you, you knew the mama mentality you know what i'm saying like that it was shit. something they live by you know what i'm saying like grind, kobe bro. posters are all over my freaking room man like i i used to lo- i love kobe man and, and like that moment it hit all of us we were playing Call of Duty, actually. We were playing, like, a customs, uh, like, like, a gunfight map or yeah, something. Yeah, bro, good fun. It was yeah. great, bro. And I think Sanjay Rajpal broke the news. Shout out to Sanjay, bro. Um, Big bye. We were, yeah, like, we were, at, <laughs> we were on uh, Call of Duty, bro. He's just like, bro, Kobe Bryant died. And we're like, no way, man. Like, we're like, that's it. Had, yeah, we had like, to troll, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, There's no way in hell that's actually. Star type yeah. shit. Because you always know, like, with TMZ, it's either, like, it's straight on 100% facts. Yeah. Or it's like, you know, it's not a bluff. A, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, what do you really know is like real or not, right? Right. So, uh, the way we took it as was just like, no, it was crazy. Let's man. just find out more because originally when we first heard the news, they said the whole family died. They said, uh, yeah, GG, you know, uh, like Bianca, all of them were all in the in, helicopter with, with them. them. Yeah. Um. So we were like, sh- you know, shaken by it. We're like, no way. And then after said, say, okay, there's eight confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they, the list went down that you know it was uh, Gianna and her like uh, her uh, her teammates and stuff, and right. then um, you know obviously Kobe and then the parents and stuff. So like it starts to like add up more that like who was in it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Even then, we were still kind of like shaking. We're like, no, there's no way in hell that like no way it could happen, bro. I, I, I was shook, bro. Honestly, like those kind of things that happen in life, bro. It's like what the fuck honestly yeah. it's like bro you don't you don't even see those things happen and a guy carrying a career like that legendary career yeah it's like something so like instant happened to the guy and you can't do nothing about it you know what i mean you can't even and it was one of those things where it's like you're wondering why it hit you so hard right you know right like you didn't know the person um, at all i i me personally i didn't even watch this like i don't tune into basketball yeah. like you know what i mean yeah so it's like so that's thing. so for him to have an impact like that <laughs> Is proven already of his greatness. Yeah, you know like it, and his grind. That's that's where yeah. I take it from. His grind, bro. His grind to to Be win. The you best know what I mean? And and work harder than anyone. And that's, that's one thing that people always remember. Like, you know, mom mentality is a real thing because it it escalates towards anything. It is For not sure. just just basketball, not just music, it's not just radio. It's whatever you strive to be great in. For sure. It's that mentality that you're gonna be great. That mom mentality, bro. That's it, man. So. Yeah, man, I, I felt like we 
it was well deserved to like make this episode dedicated to them because the impact I would not be who I am without having Kobe Bryant. I would not be making this podcast. I would not make this channel to talk about these things to without Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I hear to push you, bro. Forth, you know, I hear you. Um, even me, like last year when I was going through my own shit, like you guys were here. Um, when my shit went to fan, you know, like I had to push through, but it wasn't. It was because of you guys, but it was also me. I also trying to like get past certain sure. things and Definitely, trust people bro. again. You know what I'm saying? So. Big all that was given time but my mentality for real on that bro. real shit but um yeah so r.i.p to kobe man you know we Peace always love peace, you bro. and we're gonna continue to carry on just like what you legacy us. man for yeah. sure keep it going all right so now we're, that's we're really getting into some good topics eh? like, yeah, like, <laughs> like it's, it's just popping up already that's what i'm saying um so now that i can get itself that happens you know kobe's thing um then after our party boom Get the news. We're all going lockdown. Lockdown. Quarantine begins. Quarantine, bro. So, what was business like for you during the COVID process? Even now, because obviously it's still taking over. So, what was that like adjustment period like? <clears throat> well, honestly, bro, like it was it was keeping the same the same set of guys keep on coming in, um, keeping in a routine, same schedule. Uh, obviously, some fell off because. Some yeah. can't make it, or their parents are a little bit more or worried. Or cautious on it. Cautious, yeah. you know what I mean. And I totally respect that. You know, I'm not gonna force the client to come. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard, bro. It's it's definitely hard, just because like it's a one on one, um, uh, job. Like you need to be close contact. Yeah. And all this shit is you gotta stay six <laughs> you gotta feet apart. You know what you I know, mean? Like, like it's <laughs> you gotta stay six feet apart. So like for me doing this shit, it was like. Okay, I gotta stop bringing people from home because that's where my studio is, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I started from my garage, moved into the house, but yep. now all this COVID shit, like I said, it's going on. It's like I gotta start pushing myself outside and do some house calls, make some more money, and yep. like probably like bump up the price, you know, so I could keep yep. on my feet. You know what I mean? Everyone's gotta eat. Yep. Um, but yeah, like it's 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 been crazy, bro. It's been tough. It's definitely not the same. I miss my like you know banging out like twelve, ten fades a day. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, just staying active, like busy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just because like you're obviously like it went down like your clientele, which is expected, right? It, uh, bro. But how much do you think like cuts a day like you would do now? Like consider <laughs> compared to like how you used to do like you know in the oh, shop, bro. bro. Like a day now, like on a good day. I'd probably hit five holy crap on a good day on a shit day i probably won't even see one or i will i'll yeah. see at least one but oh that's it bro how, how are you supposed to eat off that you know what yeah I mean? and like if you're not making no other income that's why i'm trying to push for my other boys you know yep shout out danny shout out nero shout out chris yeah bro, all those guys bro like if i didn't have these guys in my family circle bro like you know it'd be crazy bro because these are the guys that push me these are the people that helped me out through my struggles, through my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. For sure. And like seeing you post this shit and like seeing you push for this, seeing my girl push for her own business, yeah. seeing her push for her streaming, like it just motivates me to go further. You know what I mean? Even though everything's set back, yeah. I just want to push forward because I see everyone in my circle doing the same thing. So why am I going to sit back? You know what I mean? No, oh, hundreds. Everyone's got to eat. It's a minor setback for a big comeback. You know 100%. what I'm saying? And I you gotta just lose, use that shit as like motivation to push through man and like I said like 100. when you see everybody adjusting that's what makes you think like alright if they're all figuring out ways to adjust to what's going on in the yeah. world what's my excuse because what, we're, what all, we're all we're all in the we're same, all in the same bullshit we all got the same 24 hours so yeah. you know what I mean use it to the most of your potential like exactly. if you can do what you gotta do do it bro like honestly real shit so that's the thing man like it's it's one of those things where it's like the only person that doesn't stop you is, is yourself. Right. That's it. So, that's the only person stopping you is the guy that you're looking in the mirror, or the, the figure that you see yourself in the mirror. That's the only thing that's stopping you, bro. And it, it's crazy, man. Like, <laughs> I, I look at these things where it's like, when when COVID first started, I'll be honest, like, I was very, like, content with, like, staying home and, because that it, was, like, our first time, like, yeah. actually having a break yeah, from it, everyday life. Yeah. You just have to stay home. From the rush. Yeah. yeah. And, it was nice. Like, I felt like I was in high school again, you know, like, <laughs> Real when shit. summer would happen and everybody's online. Real shit, You yeah. know, I was running till, like, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning. Uh, 
you know, I, I miss that feeling. So it was nice to have that opportunity to do that shit again. Big up to the whole fucking chat, bro, and COD, bro. Yeah, that the COD gunner, <laughs> COD gunners, bro. You know, yeah. yeah, I'll cheer you guys. You know, that's the thing. Like, I'm happy that we had friends and families to keep us sane during this crazy pandemic, man. Oh you yeah, know? bro. Like, I I still loved having the time off to be chilling and stuff, but I miss going out. You oh, know, hundred percent, bro. 100. Just, just that freedom to be like, yo, what are you saying tonight? Yeah, so let's go thing. Get or ready. even like, bro, like you know, like when major things happen, you know, we would link up to go yeah. watch it, or you know what I'm saying. So that's like, it's it's been an adjustment period, but I like, I, I look at it too, where it's like, yo, even celebrities have to adjust to this shit, bro. They got to do the same thing, bro. So they got to just sit home with their families. That's all they got, family, bro. Yeah. So I think like now we can get into a new uh, thing that I'm gonna have new moment called the uh the no shot moment all right <laughs> so basically like what we, you, this is the phrase that me and my boys say um whenever things happen like yo Just no way up. that happened you know yeah. you like take for example like no shot connie out here doing a whole bunch of shit with the guy <laughs> you know what i'm saying like no shot that happened right so i thought it'd be cool to uh implement this moment so the no shot moment of the day was Conor McGregor getting knocked out in the second round getting by Dustin Poirier? So <laughs> let's talk about it, bro. bro. Let's talk about it. That shit, and and again, we're watching it together. So like, mm-hmm. yo, honestly, that it's it's something to keep yourself active. You know what I mean during this shit. And you know, thanks for like inviting me for the, of course, the bro, of event. course. Um, you no, know, like it was great, bro. Like we we did have fun, even though the man got knocked out second yeah. round unexpectedly. It was it was Kodak moments, man. Like that's thing. Like I remember. Like for any wrestling event or whatever it was, like we always had people coming over. Yeah. So we had to adjust. Like it was just us, but like that was still it enough. Was good, bro. It was still better than nobody. You know what, you know what I'm saying? What I mean? Um, but yeah, bro. So <laughs> Connor getting knocked out, bro. Like uh, Dustin Shit. was the underdog, bro. He was yeah. the underdog. Huge. Um, I honestly saw that fight going to a decision. To be honest, because both I thought they would have been more like, you know, reserved and yeah. a little bit more defensive. Right. But you saw they were going hits, hit for hit. Yeah, bro. For the most part, it looked like Connor was winning that. I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, t- t- his leg was fucked. <laughs> yeah, that that's what cost him right there, though. Like, <laughs> his leg, bro. Like his leg, he he got a beating, bro. Yeah, I think that was like the only thing that fucked him over. But yeah, like big up to, to Dustin, uh, bro. Yeah. To Dustin, bro. Like that that guy. He's a fighter, bro. He's a fighter. He's, he, he he knocked out one of the greats. Like you know what I'm saying? Like not many can say that. That's tough. And. You know, it's been a year since Connor fight, uh, since he fought. The, the last fight he had was against Co- Cowboy, but Cowboy is obviously past his prime when that was just kind of yeah. like a pay cut for Cowboy at that point. Right. Um, but it was know, nice to see, like, you know, the crowd back in the stadium last night. Oh, like, yeah, that was another thing. Uh, Abu Dhabi, they had the crowd back in there. Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. It was, like, filled. Like, it wasn't, like, super filled, but, like, it was filled enough. Mm-hmm. So you felt like. It was back know, to normal life, you know, in, some in, sort. in a way. That's thing that I didn't know that the crowd was going to be there because yeah, the last yeah. time they had that, uh, when Max Holloway fights was happening at uh, the previous UFC event, um, they didn't have any fans or anything. It was just like occasional cu- couple like here and camera there. guys, whatever, whatnot. Yeah. yeah, like the most important people and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to Dustin for that. One. That was a big win. Uh, Huge Connor fun, made it clear that you know, like he wants to come back. And yo, He's can we talk about back. how like humble Connor is and all? Bro, the guy was like <laughs> not talking shit at all. Like no hard feelings toward nobody. Nobody like, like didn't call out nobody. Didn't. I think Khabib's fight actually like not, like put in I think his place it did humble him a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah it did. Just Straight. because of what was on the line and like Khabib is a beast, you know what I'm saying? Like guy, hopefully he comes back to defend that title. You know, like that's what that we want to see. Bro. You know, unfortunately, like you know, his his father also passed. Um, yeah, no. Too, you know, probably he he definitely had to take his time out. You know what I mean? He he had to do his family own stuff yeah. and you know everyone's got to respect that, even Dana White. And I'm happy that like the one thing I'll give like commend like. I think the NBA was the first one to take initiative was when COVID first took off, they were the first ones to kind of like make sure to, um, you know, they, they, they canceled the season. They, yeah. played, like, they postponed the season. Yeah. And then that's when everyone else took it serious. And then that's like, when all the sports did. And they all made adjustments period to it. You yeah, know? yeah. So big up to everybody. So Crazy, yeah. bro. Crazy time we're living in, man. All uh, sports were cut. Yeah. Like, so was... <laughs> that was the no shot, uh, the no shot moment of the day, man. Um, Conor no. McGregor getting Conor knocked McGregor. out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how else to think, bro. For all like, the people that, you know, were cheering for Conor. Yeah. Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Yeah, bro. That's okay. Um, unfortunately, you know, something else also happened uh, this weekend. 
you know, I'm gonna say this weekend because like when this comes out is on Wednesday. Uh, was you know Larry King's passing. Yeah, man. One of the most iconic, uh, iconic uh, uh, broadcasters of all time. There's over fifteen thousand interviews. You know, it's insane, has, insane, insane. So it's uh, but you know, give him credit. He lived a long, and eventful life. You know, eighty-seven years of age. You know, so R.I.P. to him, man. He did a great life, bro. Interviewed yeah. uh, some of the greats, man. Some yeah. of the greats that had already passed or are still kicking today. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, speaking of you know that like one of the greats, you know Mac Miller obviously was one of them. Uh, Shout out Mac Miller, bro. Yeah, his, He's still uh, living. See, this is my my newest collection. His post uh, famous album right here. Fire, fire. Yeah, the circles one. That was his last album. Super yeah. fire, bro. Um, Mac Miller, honestly, he he was um, he had, he had a couple songs in my in my album, yeah. or like in in my like in my shit. Top shit yeah, right? yeah, bro. In yeah. my shuffle, he what, was, uh, was he, he had some good music. Was he twenty six? When he passed? Yeah, I think like 27? 26, 27, something like that. That's yeah. crazy, bro. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Uh, he was one of my biggest inspirations. I remember when we were in high school. Um, I, I can't remember who showed me. We found his video on YouTube. Yeah. It was just like going through, like, you know, like, there was like a hip-hop playlist. So you had Drake's Take Care was around that time. Right. Nicki Minaj, you know, her Pink Friday is shit. Yeah, yeah. And then they had... Best day ever. That was like our knock, uh, oh. knock knock was one of the first songs we heard from. Yeah, and knock, I remember like you were like, "Yo, this guy can rap," but I showed Rashida and like meet her would like recite the lyrics and shit. Like it was <laughs> cringe worthy shit, bro. Like yo, we used yo. to post on Facebook, just like videos of us rapping a lot to Mac Miller. Shit. Yeah, I'll be it doing was, that shit, bro. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> bro, you made me record a video and put it on Tumblr, bro. Yeah, Tumblr, Tumblr bro. <laughs> Tum- yo, Tumblr I still use occasionally for the fire pictures. They always have like some <laughs> bomb ass pictures, bro. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it, it was one of those things, bro. It just, like, I don't know, man. Like, Max, for me, like, I always liked liking artists that were different. And yeah. he was so different because, obviously, he was white. For sure. And, you know, he had cheesy raps. But when he wanted to, like, tell, like, a, a, a thing story, yeah, he was he was in it, bro. So, like, actually, what were you listening to, like, in high school? You say, like, who was, like, your, like go to like oh shit. shit bro i'm a different guy <laughs> nah just run it bro this is why it's here the tree fat like, podcast Talk bro honestly i listened a lot of back in high school yeah. it was specifically high school yeah okay so like high school shit was like um like a lot of uh rick ross uh, uh boss man okay like I, I i did a lot of um i don't know drake was there of course yeah, yeah. um uh, meek us. mill meek mill yeah. was there of course uh, a lot of rap music like that, you know what I yeah. mean? Like uh, some underground music, but yeah, mostly for the most like part, that, I was yeah, thinking, yeah. Because yeah. around that time, like that was the what was that time? It was the Dream Chasers like movement. Yeah, you know, around that time. Yeah, yeah. The freaking YC, uh, YCM, YMCMB. Yeah, yeah YMCMB. Some shit like that. Yeah, money, cash, money. Y- YCMB. Fucking nonsense. Some shit like, <laughs> like that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was money, cash, money. Billionaires. Some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. So, so people long, remember bro. people used to wear a freaking crew, crew neck. neck. Yeah, yeah. With bro. Hats. Bro, I used to have those crew necks, bro. I used to wear to like most majority of my house parties. I swear, bro. Those Dude, crew necks are the crew necks are fire. They're okay. fire, bro. Last Kings, Last Kings was Crooks and Castle. Yeah, yeah. Crooks and Castle was, was still the hardest. Yeah. the hardest one to so Crooks and Castle crazy, was easily like crazy design, bro. That it was the because it was the Mickey Mouse gloves. Yeah, in it was the, the gloves, gloves in the gun. Yeah, oh yeah. You cannot say that like was not one of the like, hardest logos. If you look back at that's it, that's tough, bro. I would still rock it today. Yeah, like, it's still give like, me a freshie and I'll rock it. Yeah, you know like I mean? it was. Um, <laughs> that the, the, this year was hard, bro. You can't even lie, bro. That was. Uh, what else was big back then? Tisa. Tisa, yeah, the Tisa snapbacks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Snapbacks in general. Oh fuck. Tisa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mitchell and Ness was big back yeah. back then. Yeah. Goodwoods, do you remember those? The freaking I know backwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, I know those ones too, I know bro. Backwards, bro. Even From last those night. Days. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Shit. What? The yeah, the good ones. That's the top one. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The necklace. Yeah, I used to have a freaking uh, Autobots one. <laughs> yeah, you remember that one? Oh my Fuck, God. my mom's probably gonna tap into this podcast and I just like. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to your mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yo, shout out to the family, yo. It's like a shit, yo. yo. Like, I don't know who's I watching this. this. I don't know. What? Yeah, it's a podcast. Uh, we had, it's a yeah, podcast. Yeah, you, know, yeah, like, you gotta put everything on the board, you know? You can't you can't hold anything back. Bro, I'm actually happy you can do this where you're actually here because, like, 
I hate the fact that like like I don't mind it because I still could talk to my friends and shit like over Zoom calls or sure. thing, but like when you're here, it's such a different story. Yeah, you know, just... I'm hoping obviously for future ref like future that like people could be here and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I can you know get into talking about these things with more people in here and sure. obviously I'm gonna get more mics if that happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with more mics, then get a little group call, more understanding. Group, <laughs> yeah. Group okay, podcast shit. Yeah. Cause I, I got uh Sanjay and then coming up actually okay. uh, in a couple weeks. But over a stream, right? Yeah, yeah Sanjay yeah. and Vish. Um, they'll be on a couple weeks. Shout out to them. Shout out, big Sanj. That's the thing, bro. Like the the amount of people I'm gonna have on this is effort. You know, it's gonna be a thing. So I'm gonna actually have even Sheena come back. But it'll probably be you two. Like do like a you know thing couples. Oh my god, don't for sure like, for sure some shit like that. But yeah, <laughs> some um, shit. Damn. So. Yeah, the cool thing about this thing is like we can talk about anything, like anything, you know, man, like anything. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I think like we have like a like a like a kind of like a set point of like what we're gonna talk about. Yeah, but like either than that, like other than that, we can still talk about like whatever. But like back to the back to the business aspect, like yeah. So where where do you see your like you see your podcast like getting its own like like official studio and like putting it out there out there or like so, you just want to do it very low key? No, so uh, that's a good question. Actually, I didn't. So I've thought about that. Actually, I've. I wanted so this was kind of like my starting point. Definitely, um, yeah, yeah. Everyone's gonna start somewhere. Yeah, bro. Uh, fire, fire. I, I believe. So yeah, this is actually pretty good for like, a freaking room. Like, great, bro. Trust you know. me, mics are like on point. Like, you so, got this shit going, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Um, so at some point, I want to actually look into like getting a studio and stuff. Like, I've actually looked into rental and stuff for sure. actual studio and stuff. Um, but obviously because of COVID and stuff, yeah, so yeah, yeah. they're a little bit more cautious on like you only can rent it for a certain amount of time, an hour or whatever it is. So like. Uh, gotta take those in mind right um, but yeah man I, I think it would be super dope to like look into that like um, in the future and stuff definitely grow it yeah cause it's already making a movie just the first episode right Um, my fourth episode is gonna be one of probably my biggest ones and it's with a rapper cannot say who you know what I mean <laughs> only you guys know but like you know you guys will find out soon <laughs> um, so that's probably gonna be like you know a big another stepping think for just a fourth Stepping episode so for you yeah bro. just a fourth episode, fourth you, have, episode. you know what i'm saying definitely bro that's a big um, jump so yeah man it, it's super dope to you know envision these things and like it's already coming together you know like sure. i remember when i first started last year last um july you know like when i became back single again i'm like yo i'm gonna use this fucking time to like cry and focus for on my sure, shit bro. you know i got no distractions of doom me and like kill 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 that was all my mentality yeah fucking, fucking mama, mama mentality, mentality bro, just, you bro. Know, you kill know everything mean? and just Prove to these people that like, I could be the only twenty three year old doing so much. This shit. Because think about it, look, a podcast channel, um, a clothing line brand, and then a streamer on the side. All these things, in just a couple months. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And look, the podcast channel only started in January. You know what I'm saying? Like before then, it was just streaming and um the clothing line. So bro, like I just used that time as motivation to be as creative as I could and Big strive yourself, to bro. Think, you know, Thank you, bro. Good shit, bro. Um, honestly. And I'm good. happy that you're the second guest because you know, like, me and you know each other for a long time. Yeah. Do you remember when we met actually? Because we could get to that. Like, do you remember how me and you met? Fuck. I don't remember. I okay, so yo, me. honestly, let's just, let's just actually like clear the air here. Yeah. So like, I knew, I knew of you before I I your sister came to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we gotta clear we gotta the talk air. about we gotta that. Yeah, we, gotta, we, we can't we can't you know we can't just yo. say I you know. No, yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah. So. Before your sister actually came to me, right? Yeah. I knew of you. I didn't. I don't think I. I. I don't even think I had a person like a like a one on one face to face conversation. We just had like you know, like what are you saying? What are you, mutual was good. friends. Yeah, yeah. Because like my boys, Ray M, Ray Ad, shout out to shout real, to bro. real, bro. Shout out to Two Real, man. Like those he's guys. A, he's a, oh yeah. Also, he was a big big help with um getting the Trey Fam movement yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. So Ray, shout out to Ray's, Ray for that, bro. Ray's on the fucking grind, bro. Yeah, it's my guy, bro. <laughs> Young uh, entrepreneur. <laughs> Yeah, but yo, honestly, like meeting those guys and yeah. like Keith them, like they knew your circle. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Keith knew you. Yeah. Beforehand, right? Like, and then I, I don't even know if we met at that boat cruise, bro. What, no, so me and you. Was it before? It was before. It had to have been um. Gender reveal. Was it gender reveal? Yeah. No. Sam and Keith's thing. You guys are both there. No, but see, even then, I didn't even like go up to the man. I didn't like we yeah, didn't we not talk talk like that. So you guys were both there, but you never. Not nah, he no. said like the only reason why like me and him started talking was because 
I me, we always knew each other, right? Yeah, we just and, knew of each other. That like, and just say, hey, what's up? Like, yo, what's good, bro? Like, you know, you're blessed. And, and then, yeah, so one of this person w- went up to you. Um, and I was like, yo, you know, Rashina likes this guy. Like, yo, try to line that up, right? I'm like, bro, like, you know, I'm, I'm here in the boat ride. Fuck. It's gonna be so weird. Like, what am I gonna do? So then I was like, I was like, all right. And I'm like, yo, this girl's saying this, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to like come off things. So I want to say, I'm like, <laughs> so what? I, I went up to this guy, like, yo. Yo, my sister thinks you're cute, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yo, at that point, let me tell you something, bro. I was like 90% gone. Myself, <laughs> yeah, at that point. <laughs> so we're like, yo, what are you, yo, who the, yo, who's this guy, yo? <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, I told Rashawn, be my wingman. Like, help me out, right? Because yeah. I saw that they hailed each other's up. So I'm like, okay, they know each other. This man literally went up to my future boyfriend's like, yo, my sister thinks you're cute, yeah. What, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, uh, but I mean, like, I, it worked, bro. If 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 you didn't come, like, you know, to me and tell me that, like, yeah. I would have never known. You know what I mean? And yeah. we would have never been here probably today. Or which is which is crazy, yeah. then, You know, like I, I probably wouldn't be here as you know Sheena's boyfriend. You know what I mean? Yeah. But shout out Sheena, she's a great girl. Oh, that's good. Save yourself another beating for a couple of days. I <laughs> joke. <laughs> that's that's a week of uh, <laughs> that's a week of recovery day. Kapasa, bro. Kapasa, man. <laughs> Well, okay, so speaking of relationships, then. Yeah. <laughs> I think that guy kills me, bro. So speaking of relationships, then we'll get into this. Um, you know, was yeah, definitely, bro. So Sheena could be here too. You could probably come in the scene and probably talking to the mic for this one because if I'm gonna take out the audio on that, yeah, it might think. So, yeah. Um. So, was COVID like the biggest test <laughs> to relationships? I'm not even in it. Shout out Sheena. There you go. You're in there. So what do you guys say? Like, was COVID like the biggest test? relationships um okay so just to clear it up we started dating before covid happened before all this bullshit, yeah. yeah so it was the la- started... last care about a weekend yeah the it very was... last one so yeah. we started dating Great september yeah. september 2019 right so we had a few months where we can you know go out on dates and like just yeah. go <laughs> even to the mall shit. and like yeah, chill yeah. out and whatever but when like march hit we're like holy crap like we can't even see each other let alone yeah hang out and at, at, at yeah. first there like we did take a break from each other for for how many months it was i don't think we saw each other for almost three months three months yeah, yeah. Holy and crap. being so yeah. early in a relationship that was kind of hard and yeah because you know? it's like i'm trying to get to know her but how can i if, like you know what i mean yeah. all this shit just yeah. caused it so it was tough man it, but i mean we it, stayed we stayed strong and it makes you kind of yeah like makes the relationship stronger because if you're used to that distance in such a short amount of time and mm-hmm. so early in the relationship then let's say if you can't see each other for like a month it's not gonna it's gonna be like oh that's easy compared yeah, to like yeah. what we had to do you know no i hear you yeah we it was a struggle three months <coughs> yeah. three months man yeah uh yeah that, that's the thing like i look at it too where i'm like covid really you know was a true test you know what i'm saying yeah. like, I, I started the freaking before the pandemic because i think like i was already in a relationship at that time right and then you know in the middle of it you know things get in you know you realize you can't you know handle certain things so yeah 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 no definitely bro and it's like uh it's crazy bro because at the beginning of relationship any relationship like Can you, you... okay <laughs> anyway um like, yeah, <laughs> bro. Continue. Like be- beginning of the relationship, like any relationship, like I was saying, um, doesn't getting to know you. Please, please yeah, you know like the... you're you're really you're trying to get to know the person, and if you do really fall for them, like you're attached to them, right? You yeah. want to see them more. You want to go out. You want to do things with this person, right? Yeah. But three months, man. Yeah, three months. Three months straight, actually, didn't even see her. Yeah. But that's the thing, man. Like it, it like for me, I was like, because obviously I was at that time with you know like who I was with. Definitely. And I was more so like, uh, like I understood the circumstances. Yeah. Obviously, I wanted to see the person, right? But I knew the circumstances were going on in the world. I'm not gonna go out there and right. you know what I'm saying. And your family dealing with certain things, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, my grandmother is thing too, and you know, right. like obviously, uh, she also had things with her grandparents too. So I thought that you know, it was a mutual understanding on that part, you know. But just it, it, it was honestly just a true test of the relationships. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like people, if can understand and you know and it just wasn't worth it, it wasn't not that it wasn't worth it but, but it wasn't meant to be that's, all that's what was. i meant yeah, to say it's yeah, simple yeah. as that because that's the thing like hadn't things happened the way it did yeah it wouldn't have made me who i am today 
and I wouldn't have pushed me to do all this. Like, who knows if this possible? This shit would have possibly happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta look at it in the light like that. Um, but it was a true test for every relationship. Like, and it wasn't just my relationship that endured it. Everybody's. Everybody's. Yeah. There was a lot of relationships that broke up during that time. Bro. That were people were super happy too. You know what I'm saying? That were in great relationships that didn't last. The percentage that went up, bro, it spiked. It, it's crazy. It's crazy, bro. Um, but it's one of those things man where it's just like if you can get through it get through it bro that's yeah. that's what it is bro that's what if it, it is hap- if it's meant to be bro it'll be and you can't get too high too highs on the highs mm-hmm. and get too lows on the lows right you know what I'm saying? And that's what everything in life yeah that's how you got to take it as yeah right 100%. so you know what i'm saying like shout out to like everybody that's still out here like in a relationship happy you know <laughs> god bless y'all you know what i'm saying like it's good you know Definitely, building bro. with somebody that can help you you know built the goal towards it it's what's making it pos- possible you know what i'm saying yeah yeah for sure you know, like i i appreciate like you know having you know people in my life that help me motivate you know there's a even like a special girl that also helps me you know she's a really good friend to me and like great person uh shout out to emily you know what i'm saying like she's keeping in holding it down you know keeping me motivated to like shit. do shit and just you know keeping that energy where you can continue to do shit you know what i'm saying you need people like that in your life you know great friends and great family that you have around that's you. That's what that starts from. It's yeah. the, that's what starts with this whole shit, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to you guys, you know what I'm saying? You make oh, all shit. this shit possible, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, we got uh, we got big things coming in the future, bro. Um, you know, Joey, shout out to Joey Singh, bro. Uh, the Vibe Element. The Vibe Catch Element, bro. That's our bro, you know what I'm saying? Starting out streamers buzz. You Joey Bye. Yeah. <laughs> it's our guy, man. You know, shout out to him for continuously... Uh, creating and expanding you know and he, he's another one where you can look at it where he's like using this time to grind and make things yeah. pop bro you know and that's the thing and that's what i'm saying like not even the people in my circle like you guys yep. or my 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 other circle it's like i see people that i'm just meeting like joey and yep. his circle like and mm-hmm. i see them all grinding and they just want to like do better you know what i mean so it's like yo am i really just gonna sit home and do nothing like come on why all this is happening it's like you yeah. know like it's i'm gonna do something bro like even if my mom tells me don't cut hair yeah i i do kind of like like bro i don't want to go behind her back but at the same time bro like it's hard to think yeah like the people in my group that are are really wealthy and yeah and really up there and got it figured out right now they're telling me like yo even though all this pandemic shit's going on like just still grind like still put yourself out there like you yep. can be safe and still do it you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure but obviously you gotta you know set back a bit and let it cool down you know when it has to yeah but yeah you know i see other people grinding and you know shout out joey and his vibe element and yeah. all that shit is he's popping They're off popping bro off, like it's just it's great shit bro everyone's yeah. just doing their thing you know what i mean it's it's good stuff bro so obviously i was been mean to ask the fake culture hoodie, bro. Yes, sir. Shout out, uh, Christina, one of my mains. Super fire. Future Mister and Misses. Nice, nice. Like, shout to out them. to them, man. Congrats, congrats. Um, She's uh, she came through with it hard. Shout out to CJ Shoots, bro, with the design. Oh, like, like with the logo, right? Yeah, yeah, crazy, bro. Super CJ's. Yeah, if you need anything from that guy, honestly, just holler at him, bro. Wicked, He's got wicked. you. Oh, he came out fire, bro. I love the bro, logo. Bro, crazy. Like, if y'all could see that, like, it just. Yeah. I. Uh, Bro, as soon as I seen the design, I fell in love, bro. Like, yeah. I fell in love with fate culture once again. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's the thing. Like, people don't realize, but like, when you see like your your brand uh, in a logo f- format, it can motivate you to like to rerun this shit and do yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hundred percent, bro. Because that's you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Whatever you're representing, that's you. And having that, like, you know, that motivation, that just to remind you, like, yo. As hard as times may get, keep going. You can still pull, push through. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep going. There's people that believe in your 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 creative mind, and you know, just run run that shit back. You know, real shit, bro. Like, I'd be doing I'd be doing house calls on someone's driveway right now. Like, yep. real shit. Yeah. Like, honestly, just pull up to the house, and since I can't go, like, you know, inside. Did you guys actually get like problems? Like, was was there like people that were like didn't want to pay your house call price, or like? Of course, yeah. Yeah. But. You know what I mean? Are you are you gonna walk in Louis Vuitton and be like, can I can I get a you know what I mean? A, a, a cheaper thing, nah, you know? Like you know what I mean? What what the price is you gotta pay? Like, I mean, unless you're not really, you're not really trying to support. Yeah. But, you know, of course the family like, you know, you you do your your pops and whatnot. Yep. But everyone's gotta eat, man, and 
and times like this, like everyone's prices went up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's not the, just like... not just barbers. Everybody's price went up. Yeah, and that could be like detailing. That could be like anything. Yeah. Anything. Even general. like switching tires and shit. Like that shit all anything, went up bro, because everything went up. Hey, remember, it's like I'll put it like this. It's it's the best way to explain it. Is just like it's we, we all had to adapt. No, you sure. know what I'm saying? And you know you're kind of putting your life on the line in a way. You, you know are. what I'm saying? With yeah. you don't know what these other people have contracted, who they've been hanging out, hanging around with. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So business is business, and everybody's business took a toll too. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like everybody's business took a drop. So yeah, yeah. you have to make back that money that you lost. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So no, it's... definitely, definitely. You you tell people your your certain price to you know, make it out to them, and yeah. you know save them the trip, and you're trying to do everything for them. But and then they hit you with the. Uh, Yo, bro, that's that's a little too high. <laughs> and then I'm like, like, if you look at the bro, other like barbers, they charge. It's yeah, ridiculous. Bro, okay. like some of the celebrity barbers out here, like JC the barber, bro. I I've been following him from time, bro, and that guy's charging like, what? After nine, it's a thousand, over For a, a thousand. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, bro. Crazy, crazy amount, and like. Well, I'm pretty sure people. How are they that, doing so. it? And yeah. and people are still consistently going to them. Why? Because it's the quality of the haircut. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like, like you're paying for the price, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, like, for shit. That's saying like you can still buy like really good barbers at a decent price, you with can. decent house call price. That's thing, like, I but don't that's mind. up to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's up to you if you want to pay that or if you want to go to that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing, bro. Like I, I never mind, you know, like paying like house call prices and stuff. Um, whatever it is, because it's like everybody's business took a toll, and you have to understand like you they're taking their own risk in 100%. a way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you can't get too picky and thing like that, bro. That that's still crazy about people that like. Give you all, give people a hard time over that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they they they're putting their life on the line in a way to like you know cut your hair, like, yeah. you know whatever the case is. Make so. you look fresh, bro. While I'm looking here like a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the cut, bro. You know, what yeah, saying? bro. It's, it's fire. It's uh, bro. It's hard times, bro. I, I before all this shit, like tell cut, like, anybody, week, tell anybody in Iconic Academy, bro. You will yeah. see freeze on the barber chair every yeah. Friday. Yeah. Like once a week, I would be getting my tapered. There's no other way I'm leaving the shop. Yeah. Like Spins, no other way. Spins used to cut me once a week too, bro. Like ev- like uh, but Blazeman, I used to come once a week, and it was super chill because like his location is like right down the street from where we are. Super blessed. Um, you know, I'm hoping his stuff gets cleared up, cleared out. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy, man. Always. Um, sure. I was gonna support him, so make sure to check out uh, Blazeman if you guys need a cut too. Also, you have Fade Culture here. You could take a <laughs> cut too. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the Battle of the Barbers. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Blazeman, when's the, where's the Barber battle. Yeah, that, that's our guy, man. Um, but that's thing. Like we were getting cuts. I was getting. Me and you were getting cuts like once a week. You know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Once and a week, bro. We had to like learn to adapt to that thing. Like, dude, I had a beard at the start of COVID. Like, I actually grew a beard. Um, uh, but one, I like one it. side. One side, yeah, one side. The other side was just kind of like train tracks. It was just kind of halfway, like in between. Nah, you got it, bro. But uh, yeah, bro, it, it was sick. Like my hair was long and stuff, but you know, it's. I'm happy to still get. Thank God, like I, I always tell this guy, I'm like, if he hadn't like been cutting my hair, I don't know, like, I would, like how I would like do this. Walmart shit. clippers, bro. Oh my God, can you imagine? <laughs> Rashino, her, I had to cut my hair. <laughs> like, shit. You know, give the YouTube tutorial, you know, <laughs> how to. No, I just shave it. Oh my God, no. It's easy. No, 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 no. How you never touching that shit again? Nah. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck, I look like bro. Um. Uh, so obviously like you told me like you know the pros to you know being a barber and you know what you've obviously had to make the adjustments and stuff so in the industry like do people really live by that lifestyle or there's like a lot of like you know like you know all these barbers and shit like do they actually like flaunt the way they do like they actually making that type of money they actually driving these type of cars or you know what i'm saying like it's something i've been curious about because like there's a lot of like people that flaunt the way they live yeah there's a lot of celebrity barbers nowadays like you know everyone that that jumps into the to the scene into this field like you know they they start getting a little bit better and then they just start hyping themselves like you just gotta humble yourself in this shit you know what i mean like yeah. yo just do your fate don't even watch next barber bro like why should i matter you know bro saying? i used to work at um i used to work at a what's that shitty fucking shop fucking was that bramley yeah like, ashby, another location? ashby girl fuck that place that was the first time I I, I caught my hair cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about that after. Dude. I'll talk about like, that after. <laughs> bro, she reminds us after. Dude. Honestly, like places a uh, place like that, 
where it's like full of barbers, walk-ins, yeah, twenty four seven. You know what I mean? Steady. Uh, there's barbers criticizing you. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, bro. I was the I was a new guy in the shop. Didn't yeah. know anyone. I actually think I I knew one guy. Yeah. Um. Uh, who was it? I think it was uh. Sean. Yeah, yeah, it was Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bro, I didn't know anyone in the shop cutting hair. Like at first, I wasn't the greatest. Yeah. I know that, but everyone starts building at like some, some point. point yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, people will be in the back of the room, like, like just talking, yeah. and you're like, "What the fuck?" You know what yeah. I mean? But it's like. At the same time, you just keep yourself like you know humble, focus on your shit. Keep it know? on your on your own. You know what I mean. Just keep your words to yourself. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like with every industry, regardless, there's always gonna be people that's gonna prey on your downfall in a way. Of course, and, bro. You know, of like course. you just gotta push them to the side and you know yeah. keep on going. Yeah. Chino couldn't obviously vouch for that. Like we've had people report our accounts recently. You know what I'm saying? Stupid, My one bro. fucking yeah. got ba- banned, and I had to make a new one, which was you know obviously it was annoying, but like I looked at it as like a fresh start to keep just people I want to interact with yeah. on my sh- page and mm-hmm. knowing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, because mm-hmm. then it you cancel out all those people that's praying for your downfall. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. uh, you don't know, like I said, like, when you have like a thousand followers and shit on IG, you don't know which one of those are the ones that are reporting are like people who used to follow you, yeah. you know, just, you know, so people don't want to see you win, bro. And that's the thing, like, they hate when they see you doing good. That's and that's what motivates you to like, you know, if you, people are taking time out of their day to, Go search up your name on IG or whatever to talk shit. To talk like shit, you like, know what I mean. They're just putting your name to more people. They're yeah. just making <laughs> so your name heard. Shit all, you know? Real so like, shit. And yo, what this person do? And then they, they tongue along your stuff. And there's then always see... gonna be shit talking, bro. There's always gonna be shit talking. Uh, that's a part of it, man. You know, it's it, it's crazy, man. But like, see, thing. moving from that like mall shop to just outside, actually, to a iconic uh, house of barber. Shout out to them again. The right by the Popeyes location, right? Bro, yeah, <laughs> amazing shop. Yeah. Like, great family. Uh, shout out Shannon. Yeah. Shout out everyone in that shop, man. Greg, fucking sh- like Christian. Yeah. Everyone, bro. Faisal, everyone, bro. Andrew. Be sure like, to tag them. Actually, like, like if, yo, uh, honestly, those shows. guys, bro. Those guys made me know what family is in a shop. Like yeah. those guys held it down for me. Like yo, those guys will be dealing with a client. Yeah, and know why they would actually come to help me. Yeah, swear, bro. That's crazy. And, and they will show me techniques while, while their clients, clients are sitting there. Yeah. And, and like, like, you don't really do that. Like, no, because you shouldn't do that. Stuff, yeah, like you're like. You, you know, shouldn't do that. You know. That's what out of respect to you, right? So, but shout out Christian, bro. That guy, like late night cuts, bro. That shit's gonna be coming back, bro. Hundred percent late night cuts. Yeah. Like you obviously don't know about it, but it was something that we had going in his basement, like uh, 10, 11, and twelve. Those were the three appointments that me, Ray, and Riyad had. Oh wow! Every fucking Friday. That's or crazy. every other Friday, you know what I mean? So it was like right, yeah, right direct. And it was so perfect because late night cuts, like he was just fading man's late night, you know, yeah, just so listening to like music, bumping, off. playing video games in his basement. Like he, it was he a vibe. A super chill. Um, he had a really, like, the really nice barbershop in the basement, right? Yeah, bro, super yeah. fresh, super fresh, yeah. super fresh, and like you know what I mean. He was just grinding from his basement, bro. Shout out Christian, bro. That guy, like he's forever my mentor and in, uh, in, in barbering, bro. He's the one that got me into it. So like, I was gonna ask you, like, so whenever you see people like you know, like, in public, right? And they got, like, a, a crisp fade or whatever, right? Could you, like, tell the difference from, like, the average... Like, obviously, you can tell the difference from, like, an average guy who's, like, yeah. thinks that, oh, that's a nice fade. But, like, when you look at that fade, 100%. right? 100%. You're probably looking at, like, yo, like, what does this guy do? Like, 100%. You, you're picking at it, right? Yeah. But do you feel like when you see, like, certain people, they're like, yo, I could have done a better job than that? Uh, Honestly, bro, like, I would never hate on anyone's haircut. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't. Like... Even to the people in my um, academy, like yeah, my, yeah. my barber school, there were some people that didn't even know how to hold a clipper. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and I didn't know how to do scissors, but I knew my barbering aspect of it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, there were some, <laughs> there were some pretty fucked up haircuts I walked out yeah. of that shop, bro. <laughs> like, let me tell That's you. That's what bro. I want to hear, bro. This is what the show wants, bro. <laughs> like this, like it had some fucked up haircuts, bro. Like walking out of that shop, and people yeah. would still. Pay that twenty dollars and walk out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but see, those clients knew what they were coming to. Like, that was yeah. like an academy. Like, you know, you're getting cut from a student. Yeah, you're not for sure. From, from three sixty Jeezy. Like, you're not getting yeah, yeah. that top like of the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people were still walking out of there like happy because yeah. it was the vibe. It was the vibe in the. In it's the, the energy that. The, yeah. 
That's right. The first time I came there was years ago. Um, and when I went there, they asked me if I wanted like to wash my hair and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, like it was very super professional, very organized, very professional. And at that time, I'm like, that's Martin, bro. A, a young little shit. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, I just want a haircut, bro. Like, I don't need all this. <laughs> but I didn't realize what they were trying to do is like they're trying to condition your hair, take care of they're it. They're trying to like know? give you that, that service, service, bro. And then as I got older and I went a couple times, I started to like get that shit done because yeah, you know, yeah. like it's part of the service. It's what's yeah. gonna. And then you look at it too. You're like, oh, this is no other barbershop's really doing all these things. And nah. even their, their menu layout was like Crazy. the cleanest like thing. I remember it too. Like it was very organized. You know, they'll tell you like you can get cut at this time. You know, yeah. with this person, uh, you can you know come back if you need to. Or whatever it was like, they're very organized and really scheduled. And that was one thing I respected because I've been going to shops that were like the shittiest of shitty. Where like yeah. you, you walk in there, like there was you know hair all over the place they and don't like sweep, nah. they don't sweep or anything you're walking, walking over like five other clients bro <laughs> yeah and you know you would have to wait she do you remember i used to wait it was like three hours for a haircut yeah at shine barber crazy yeah shine barber it was a wicked shop don't get me wrong my a couple of my boys work there shout out to them bro uh but y'all gotta figure out like some sort of like fucking organizing like <laughs> thing bro like you know what I'm saying? Like, appointments, bro. Appointments, bro. I've been telling y'all, everybody asked for appointments, but like, they had such a like, so I respect them though, like, they still made their money. Stuff. No, like, Russia, yeah. They were super understanding. I'm just joking, guys. You know what I love. Uh, <laughs> but they, um, what they did was they, they had so much clientele, like, such a strong following. They never had enough time to, uh, <laughs> uh, what's it called? Um, you know, book appointments. So you right. were forced to, you know, just walk in, just walk in and then wait. Yeah. They used to show movies. Crazy. In the meantime, while you'd wait. That's how long you used to wait. Yeah. That's that's fucking watch the Incredibles. You that's know, every time crazy, I, you know, Spider Man and shit, like I was all showing in there for like you know, I would honestly just get vexed and walk out. But yo, but that's thing like <laughs> growing up though, we didn't have like there's not there wasn't as many like fade barbers yeah. in Brampton yeah, true. at that time. True. So you were forced to think like Umin still gets his haircut from fucking um First Choice? First Choice. No. No Umin. And I tell this, I'm telling this guy, bro, like, come I'll to freeze, no. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, bro, you gotta hook up. Bro. Even just for a lineup guy, yeah, like, he'll don't help let the ante touch your hair. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. It's like, bro, he's like, yo, $10 cuts, though? I'm like, nah, bro, it's not worth the $10 cuts, bro, trust me. <laughs> Mom used to make sure to not take me to that shit, bro, you know? Bro. Do you guys remember, uh, oh, she never probably remember this. The story about how, how my hairline got fucked up? Did I ever tell you this? Nah. I think you actually told me once. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in Brownlee Sea Center, there's a barbershop, one of the original ones called Shit. The Barbershop. Um, and a couple of the guys knew how to fade, or claimed they knew how to fade. So this was, I was, I was 16. I think I was 16. Uh, and it was my semi-formal night. Mm-hmm. So obviously I'm like, yo, I gotta get Oh yeah, I did hear this. <laughs> so mom takes me to the barbershop, right? Uh, <laughs> so we go there and none of the other fade experts they already all left so there's only shit. one guy and it's this old 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 white man right and mom was like i don't know if you should i'm like yo i need to cut though i'm not gonna like you know go like this go like this like i can't so we go uh but I tell the guy i want a, a 0.5 here blend until one okay okay uh i'm like i'll just keep the top because i had to come over that time so i okay. just, like, just keep the top you know maybe trim off you know, a little bit a couple inches whatever so he's like okay i got you first thing he does he buzzes straight across the side. Straight up. And you can see, look, you see it right here. <laughs> it's fucking scarred right here. You see it. It's still thing. He buzzes straight up. And my mom's like, uh, what are you doing? He's like, I'm giving him a fade. And then I'm there like like a dumbass. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I just trust him. You know, he's like, guy knows what he's doing, right? Like the bar for years, you know what I'm saying? Like he probably knows what he's doing, you know? Uh yeah. So he buds it straight across, and then after I see what he does, I'm like, yo, he's gonna have to clean the whole thing. So he gave me one of the most trashest fade I've ever had in semi formal history. In history, it's semi formal history, not even just thing. So I get this fade, and me, I keep you on, me, Sheena, and mom for like 15, 20 minutes right before the semi formal started are trying to freaking rearrange my hair, figure out a way to co- cover it cover up. Cover it up. <laughs> Lick it to the side, bro. Like, like oh, damn, yeah. bro. So I kid you not, I was a joke of like all my group chat, you know, the back bench squad made fun of me the entire week 
because they saw what happened. <laughs> so up here, to happen, I had bro. to take this here, like, and I'm like combing it to the side, bro, putting it down. <laughs> you know, the longest time you start slicking some part of your hair down just yeah. so you can cover the side. That's, so, that's, that's dude, funny. I look back at that man. I wanted to. Oh my god, bro, that was like the worst. I had to go to that semi-formal, looking like a freaking Cabbage Patch doll or some shit, bro. Like with that hair, the way it was looking. Bro, honestly, I don't. I don't even know if I ever got a bad haircut. Like going back and looking back at it. Even privilege, bro. That's that's, like, that's all. I, I don't say. think so, bro. Even when you were little. I'm trying to think back to it, but nothing's ringing a bell. But like those times yeah. where you you said you were waiting time and like in a barber shop. Wait I time was like one of the worst. Yeah. I know those ones. Dominican um, guys, they can fucking talk, bro. Yeah, <laughs> they can fucking like stock up a storm and like forget Even about your Jamaican haircut. shops too. Like that's like I used to get thing by a whole bunch. So you they used to like do like perms on the other side, like you yeah, know, like yeah. so I was just there like a little skinny brown self, you know, like, <laughs> waiting for my car, bro. My God, man. Yeah, bro, it was so funny. So I used to wait for a cut and shit. Like it, it was, it was, it was a pain, bro. It was but all worth it. It though. was funny though, cause what it was so funny. I remember, so I remember getting a cut like when I was uh, when I just turned uh, nineteen from uh, from Shine Barber, right? Mm. And one of the guy that cuts me, I can't remember his name right now, but um, he ended up coming to an event later on that night, the same one I went to. It was oh, Dad's event. It was my dad, Fresh Cut. Shout out to my dad, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> shout out Fresh Cut. Shout, shout out for being, you know. A dad, you know, <laughs> so he held an event, right? And uh, the freaking guy, he uh, he shows up, right? And I remember uh, we're just like, you know, organizing, like, you know, we're like making sure everyone's tickets are things. So I was yeah. helping out, whatever. He shows up and he's like, "Hey, we're shot, man!" And I'm like, "I was like, yo, what do you say, bro?" I'm like, "Yo, this is the event you have to go to." He's like, "Yeah, man, you saw it tonight." <laughs> I'm like, "He's like, what are you doing here?" I'm like, "It's my dad's thing." Like, bro, we love it's man party, bro. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'll see you later. I took a drink of it later. Oh, uh, like, sick, sick. Yeah, it was just so funny because I'm like, yo, like, you know, we're both getting fresh up for the night. Yeah, yeah go to just the come out here and then he ended up coming to the same Silk Revolution event. That's fucking jokes. When I first started IT, bro. Oh my god. <sighs> Do you remember your first like event? What it was? Uh, I'll get to my story after. But. Fuck. Um, like event, event. It was. Oh fuck. So that's year, like a long time to go back to it all. <laughs> no, I just there were so many fucking events, bro. The first yeah. one. Yeah, we went to a lot, bro. I remember mine because it was just before. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I think it was. Uh, I honestly think it was an ankle night. Oh, you okay. know that? You yeah, know yeah, that nightclub the, in, in uh, Saga. Saga. Yeah, 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 right yeah. on the corner there. Oh, nice, nice. I think it was an ankle. It was a Spanish night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to all those uh, <laughs> crazy ones out there. <laughs> Damn, bro. The first event I went to actually was... Um, it was also my dad's one. Uh, at mm. that time, though, I wasn't even 19 yet. So, throughout, like... I've only, I've been to, like, all ages and stuff. You know, That's when I was sick, younger. though. I got, so, I got to experience uh, when dad Secrets was there. A, yeah. Right before they thing down when it was, you know, 15 and stuff. Shout out to Anil, bro. Uh, Anil uh, and Alex, bro. They were one of uh, the first people we went on um, uh, an all ages party with. <laughs> when we were 15 bro so shout out to those guys That's and Sean crazy, bro and Sean, bro. shout out to Sean bro those are my guys man shout out to them I haven't you know like th- those are the guys where we went on our first party and shit together that's, that's insane um, so yeah when I turned eight, uh, when I turned 19 uh, I, I, I didn't turn 19 yet but I was a couple months to turn 19 okay uh, I was going through like my own shit with, and like dad was like yo just come you know come out mm-hmm. uh, so I kid you not it was me dad Uncle Shaz or Shiraz Shirasta shout out to him and Rickford <laughs> <laughs> so Rickford. these four guys, bro, it was like a f- like the three OGs babysitting like the, the young boy. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's what yeah, yeah, like. The young boy. So <laughs> we all went out and uh, we went to my dad's soccer race party and it was at the view. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, I was so excited. You know what I'm saying? Super chill night. You know, I was like, dude, like I'm like, yo, yo, this is what it feels like, bro. There's so many fucking girls, bro. I'm like, yo, this is amazing. Bro. Go insane. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going insane, bro. <laughs> Real shit. And I remember, I'm like, yo, I went up talked to one girl. Uh, Got curved, <laughs> and I'm talking to another girl. You know, I got a number or whatever. Rickford was my wingman there. He's like, "Yo, bro, I got you, bro. I got you, bro." You know how Rickford talks, yeah, right? Yeah. He's like, "Yo, it's like, yo, you don't think how many times I get curved? I can do this. I can do this. You gotta do it." <laughs> I swear, God, Rickford's like, like a Kevin Hart. That's yeah, what I yeah. say. The way he talks, <laughs> That's way he's Kevin too. Hart, yeah, bro. Yeah. So like, I'm like, all right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a super chill night. You know what I'm saying? And it was weird because like I'm going around, I'm meeting all these DJs. So like. All my dad's DJ friends, Tricky, Soldier, shout out to those guys, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't know, like, 
uh, you know, how to like be with them because they're all like, wait, Freshka has a son? The young man is <laughs> like, here. Like, yo, what do you say, bro? The like, young you know man is here. And they're like, yo, think about this, world. you're partying with your son now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about that's crazy. Yeah. You know, not many could say that. So your dad's an OG barber, bro. That's that's something not many people could say, bro. Yeah, that's... OG in the game, bro. He he, he really like pioneered the movement of you know, DJing. An OG. Did I say that? Yeah, he said OG oh, barber. Oh fuck. OG you still DJ. Think barber nah, nah, nah. DJ, bro. O- Crazy OG, DJ, yeah. bro. He, he pioneered the movement. You know what I'm saying? And you know, like it's... shout out that Bo Cruz. He uh he got me super. Tr- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the guy. Yeah. <laughs> the soccer rank, bro. Yeah. So good. So it was. Bro. It was. Great uh, night. I was. I was pretty thinking that night too. Great it night, bro. Super Great night. Thing, though. But that's the thing with those things. Like he he knows how to like hold parties down and like what the people want. Yeah, yeah. So you know, like, do you think actually at one point like. Do you think anytime this year, like, shit will go back to normal? Not, right? This this year? Yeah. 2021? I, I would we'll, say, we'll, like, we'll yo. Get, like, you know, remember, like, where we went in the summer? Something yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Like Something like that. Something yeah. like that, yeah. I feel like I'll go back to that. Like, which I would appreciate. Like, but, yo, honestly, I think, like, around November time. Yeah. I don't know. I hope shit close, like, like you know, calms down. Yeah. But, man, if it takes over then, like, up until then, fuck, I don't know, bro. Because, dude, think like, it's already, time. like... How do I put it? It's become like re- we've adjusted very well for yeah. the most part. You know what I'm saying? Like even when people we've known people that have had it, you know, I've known people that have had it, and then a couple of weeks they're chilling after. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's not as bad as it may seem, but still, t- you still got to take precautions in depending on your health level. Yeah, your health level, and then obviously the elders and stuff. Right. So you know, like it's like, we're gonna hope and pray that things get back to normal at some sure. point. You know. I take this time though to continue to adjust and you know like you know we've made it work for how long you know what i'm saying yeah man just keep the grind up man that's yeah. that's what it is just keep it going and try to uh think i don't know well, just try to keep saying bro hey, Fuck. that's all we can do man and you know like the only way that's gonna happen is if we're all in this together 100 percent, bro high school musical shout out to Amin, bro and that you know singing high school musical the other day <laughs> those oh guys bro i did not plan that wow that was super funny. Um, wow, think about it. That's how we're going to end the show on a high school musical note. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> but uh, thank you, bro, for, you know, taking this time to, you know, I know you're obviously a really busy man and stuff. And, you know, I appreciate you even being here because I know, like, it, it, it takes a lot to, like, even open up and, you know, even be on camera and stuff. You know, I, I took me a little time to get used to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, like, it, it's super <laughs> chill that, like, you took the time to do this, you know, I'm happy for you What you're bringing With fake culture You know what respect, I'm saying Respect bro respect You know the fact That you're still able To cut people And like Make the most Of these situations Cause you know man Like a guy A haircut is very important You for know sure. what I'm saying it, And it's not just like What it represents to me It's also what it represents To the barber too Because yeah. Retake People are wondering Like who's getting Their cut from that You know what I'm saying like, people, people notice that haircut And they wanna know Where you get that cut that? from yeah, yeah. So that conversation It builds that platform For you So you know what I'm saying I appreciate Free culture, what you've Respect, been doing bro. for us, man. You know, thank you for being the first guest, bro. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me you by. Know, this is why I came for a, you know, it's a like, vibe, bro. It's a vibe. And you know, like, appreciate everybody that's we'll do been this shit again. And we're gonna do this again. Yeah, this is not the first time. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just the second episode. There's more coming in. Great, bro. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know, I appreciate everybody. You know, this is gonna be dropping on Wednesday. My boy, free some fake culture. You know what I'm saying? Respect, Straight Sean. Back. Shout out to Rashina, Maripos, and Jude. She was just here, just, you know, <laughs> just doing her little thing over there. You Shout know. out to her. Shout out to Mary Posa Jules. Yeah, so she uh, represented that. And, uh, yeah, so thank you guys, yo. We got this. No, no. Got it.